Hey fans, it's me Aaron for a comic show. It's uh, another good week of comics. There's five Wednesdays this uh, October. Next Wednesday is actually Halloween and there's new books there as well. Um, we did a live stream last night that, that was really fun. Uh, so we're gonna be doing that every, every Tuesday at 8.30. We're going to do a Facebook live stream where we're auctioning off stuff. Pops, vintage toys, variant covers, comic books, uh, lots of stuff. It was fun. And it was Oral and I just having a good time and uh, we enjoyed it. So we're going to be doing it again. And I talked some about the new comics there just in the interim as we were waiting for things to sell or, or whatnot. But um, here's the books this week that I liked. Return of Wolverine, number two. I love this book. And uh, it's giving me a lot of the nostalgic feels that I had as a kid when I loved Wolverine because, you know, he's a badass. He, he's a badass. Um, he didn't know about his past then. Um, he was drawn all Barry Windsor Smith. You know, it was, um, I'm getting a lot of those feels. Charles Soule is killing it on this. Um, I'm really digging it. And I like that this Wolverine, his past memories are locked up in his head. And it's high octane action craziness. Uh, yes, yes, his claws do heat up sometimes. It did in here. It, it was the hot claws buns in this one, but it was cool. It was cool. The scene was actually really awesome. And uh, so, you know, I was against it when I first heard about it. It sounds stupid. The scene was awesome. They don't light up all the time, just sometimes when he wants to, I suppose. And uh, I dug it. So I'm on board for Charles Soule, Return of Wolverine. I'm on board for Uncanny X-Men. Let's make the X-Men great again. All right, forgive me. I, I just, I want the X-Men to be like how I liked in the 90s. Let's go, let's do it. I, I think that's what Marvel's doing. Punisher number three, this World War Frank has been totally ridiculous. Like, he is taking out villains, like real super villains, and now they've declared war on Frank. This had uh, Daredevil in it. Uh, Daredevil is trying to take Frank in. Uh, he has to, I suppose, defend Frank because he's trying to not die himself. And uh, lots of stuff happens. I, what I gave you was just the premise of this issue, and then it was balls to the wall crazy. The entire issue pretty much takes place on a subway. It, if they do this, adapt this to a Netflix Punisher Daredevil, it will be totally insane. I'm loving this Punisher run. Moving on to ridiculous stuff, Infinity Warps, Arachnite. This is a mashup of Moon Knight and Spider-Man. So there's the three different identities of uh, Moon Knight's mental disorder. Um, you know, like, you're just supposed to have one secret identity. Well, why do you have so many? You know, that, that's too far. But one of them is a Peter Arachnid Spider-Man, one that's happy-go-lucky. One of them is pretty hardcore psychopath, and uh, there's one in between. So get it if you like Moon Knight or Spider-Man, or if you've been enjoying the Infinity Warps, you know the brand of wackiness that, that it is. All right. Three different Spider-Geddon books. Yes, yeah, Spider-Geddon number two. I'm not gonna spoil stuff. You know characters are dying. You know it's the inheritors. You see it on the cover. You know what's going on. It's more, um, more craziness. Spider-Girls is out. This is a mini-series tying in, and you see there's three different Spider-Girls on the cover. You have the, um, I guess, two Peter daughters. One, the original Spider-Girl Peter daughter, and then you have the Spider-Girl from Renew Your Vows, and then you have uh, Aranya, and uh, that is their own mission with Jody Hauser. If you're getting Renew Your Vows, you should get it because it's the same writer, it's continuing. And then Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider. Uh, I've warmed up to calling her Ghost Spider because, I mean, calling her Spider-Gwen is like, that's her name, you know, what about secret identities? It's kind of cool, I guess, but whatever. And then Spider-Woman, there's lots of Spider-Women. And uh, Ghost Spider, you know, she kind of has like a hood like a ghost, and it sounds kind of like Ghost Rider, so I mean, that's cool. And it's like GS, like Gwen Stacy, is kind of like her initials. I mean, come on, it's clever enough, it's clever enough. But anyway, look at this art germ cover, that's cool. Um, it recaps on just two pages her parts in our uh, Spider-Geddon 1 and 2, so you don't have to read that if you don't want to. If you just want to continue on with Spider-Gwen after her series, it's here, picking up, moving on. It was cool. The things you like about Spider-Gwen is in it, including um, a little bit of Spider-Ham, and uh, I dug it. Moving on to our indie book, Burnouts. Issue 2 did 
really well for us. I mean, issue one did really well for us. We still have some because we went heavy. Issue two is out this week. Saving the world one puff at a time. What it is are these teenage burnouts that um, they appear to be self-destructive. They appear to, you know, the whole like no future, punk, you know, ah, like no respect for my surroundings type of uh, jagoffs. But really, they're fighting invisible aliens that you can only see if you're high. And they're high. So they're getting high for us. And they're saving us. So, you know, respect your local um, pothead, because he might be saving the world from aliens. And then finally, DC, Drowned Earth Prelude tie-in. Uh, Drowned Earth Prelude was last week with um, Justice League 10 and also the um, Aquaman tie-in, Aquaman uh, 41. Well, this is Titans 28, and it's Tempest. Tempest, you know, the Atlantean, used to be Aqualad, was a Teen Titan, was a Titan, comes back, rallies the team. Titans are having their worst week ever with what is going on with Nightwing and Arsenal and Wally West Flash. So Tempest comes along and says, hey, let's stop the world from drowning. And it's a great tie-in. I mean, it was a, a, a obvious tie-in because Tempest is a Titan character that's also Atlantean. And I totally dug it. It was fun. I'm down. I'm ready for Drowned Earth to start in earnest. And speaking of another great crossover, Witching Hour, this has just been perfect. I've, I've always had a soft spot for magical characters in the DC Universe, going back to pre-Vertigo with Swamp Thing, Hellblazer, through Vertigo. I, I've always loved it. I even like Shadow Pact, and I've really dug this Just League Dark, and it just hit the ground running, tying in Wonder Woman, all the characters that I wanted so far are here and going crazy, and I'm really, really digging it. So it's uh, Constantine's there, Black Orchid's there, and it's it's just crazy good. So I am enjoying it. All the earlier parts are sold out, and it's um, dude, just answer the phone and then hang up on the person. Like, how hard is that? Okay, uh, Justice League Odyssey number two. It's like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Um, no. Uh, just League Odyssey number two, and then just leave it off the hook. I mean, come on, it's not that hard. Just League Odyssey, they're in space, it's sci-fi, Darkseid is there, there's a reason for Darkseid to be there, he called them all, and uh, do you want to see Darkseid fight uh, Cyborg? Do you want to see Darkseid fight Azrael uh, and Starfire? I liked it, I'm down. The, the cover is foil, it's kind of weird, but I'm digging it. Old Lady Harley, it's like Old Man Logan, sure, 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 yes, yes. But, like Deadpool, Harley can um, rip off, parody, spoof anything, and get away with it because of the nature of the character, much like Deadpool. So it's Harley in the future as an old lady. I'm not going to say what future, but it's an established future timeline that you know and probably like in the greater Batman universe. Um, you know, it's our universe, okay, but a possible future that we already know about, and this is her in it, and we don't know that till later in the issue, and I'm totally not going to spoil it. Someone might spoil it online. I'm not going to spoil it. So um, it was highly enjoyable. I liked it. So if you like Harley, get it. Frank Thierry wrote it. He's done a lot of wackadoo stuff, uh, Space Punisher, for example. I'm excited about his one-shot Yogi Bear versus Deathstroke the Terminator. That's coming soon. But um, yeah, Old Lady Harley number one. And uh, Batman the Wedding Volume 7 right here. Uh, spoiler, you know they don't get married. They spoiled that before the issue even came out on USA Today or whatever. But it was a great story. I enjoyed it. I like that there's a certain character behind everything. I really dug it. Um, sure, they could have gotten married and she could have ran. That would have been better, I suppose, for everyone's satisfaction, but it was a good story. And then finally, for DC, we got this pretty awesome Aquaman statue, wave, trident, all that. It's a PVC statue, so you could drop it, probably wouldn't break. Just 45 bucks. And uh, then we also got here at a comic shop only uh, this week, some flash 12-inch PVC statues from the uh, imports from 
artifacts and they're 120 retail, but we got them for a special deal and selling them for 70. So uh, yeah, I'll probably put a couple on eBay as well. But I really liked it. I like the stand. I like his, I like his tush. I like everything about it. I like that it's so Silver Age looking. And that's the week that is. Um, sorry the phone rang and the guy didn't understand that he could answer it and then hang up on the person. But um, yeah, it rang like three or four times. But that's cool. You know, it shows you, we do this in one take. I don't have a script. I just talk about comics. It's for real. You know, thanks guys. Bye-bye.